the problem we will solve now is this. Consider a output machine. Here we have a mass M1. Here there is a mass M2. And there is an internal mechanism that ejects mass. It's like a rocket. And uh, the problem is to find the acceleration. So if I have to give a name to this problem, output machine with a rocket or rocket empowered output machine. Before I solve this uh, problem, uh, let's warm up to it uh, by uh, simple examples. Of course, uh, we assume the pulley has no mass, no, iner uh, no inertia, and uh, we neglect the uh, mass of the ropes. So this is the ordinary output. And what's the acceleration of this system? Suppose M1 is larger than M2. Simply, we can look at it like this. M1, M2, this is pulled to the right, left with M1G. This is M2G. Therefore, the acceleration is the net force. It's moving this way. M1 minus M2G over M1 plus M2. Now, uh, to, uh, this is a, uh, the actual problem is a variable mass problem because M2 is losing uh, uh, mass. So uh, I will use momentum arguments here. So let me use the same uh, arguments for this uh, trivial problem. How will, of course, I will get this answer. So this is M1, M2. So at a certain time, it is moving with velocity v. And at time t plus delta t, it has accelerated m1, m2. It is moving with v plus delta v. So initially, the momentum is pi is m1 plus m2 v. Final momentum. Now it has a bigger uh, speed, m1 plus m2 v plus delta v. Therefore, the change in the momentum, the v's will cancel. So it is m1 plus m2 times delta v. And the change of momentum per unit time is the force. So let me just divide by delta t, delta t. This is the force. This is the acceleration. And this is the net force applied on the system, and that's obviously M1G minus M2G. Okay? So A is again M1G minus M2G divided by M1 plus M2. So we will follow this method in following this uh, variable mass problem. So I'm racing this warm up exercise. So m2 is a function of t. Sometimes for a short hand, I will write m of t. This is m20 minus lambda t. Okay. So this is mass. This is mass per unit time. Uh, so as time goes on, uh, the mass of this thing is uh, decreasing. So let me call this to be precise, mt, okay? This one. So let's take a particular time, t, where the mass is mt. So just like the previous case, this is mt, this is m1, and this is going with velocity v. At time t plus delta t, 
I have M1. Now I have here, it has lost mass delta M, MT minus delta M. And it is going with the speed V plus delta V. We lost a mass delta M in this system and it is moving to the right with some velocity with respect to ground. Now, uh, the ejection mechanism is such that uh, the internal mechanism, the pump or whatever it is, uh, ejects mass with uh, speed u0 with respect to this mass. So, suppose uh, there are mechanisms that is shooting this mass with uh, speed u0 with respect to here. So, uh, We have to find out what Vg is. Therefore, uh, the velocity of delta m, so this is delta m, with respect to mt is u0. I gave the velocity of uh, this part uh, as V plus delta V, and uh, therefore this is Vg. Okay. Therefore, V with respect to ground is mu zero minus V minus delta V. So we can write the uh, momentum, at, uh, total momentum of the system at time t and at time t plus delta t. So P initial is the momentum at time t. That's equal to M1 plus MT times V. Final momentum at PT plus delta T equals the momentum of this system to the left. So M1 plus delta M uh, plus MT minus delta M. V plus delta V now to the right we take with a minus sign minus minus delta M VG which is U0 minus V minus delta V and we subtract delta P is equal to PF minus PI This V and that thing cancels, so I have M1 plus MT delta V and minus delta MV. I ignored the second order term in the small quantities, delta M times delta V. Therefore, minus delta M U0 plus delta m v, and I again ignore the second order term. As you notice, these things cancel. Delta p, delta t is the force acting on the system. If I divide by delta t, that's acceleration. So it is m1 plus mt times acceleration minus Delta M, uh, delta T is lambda u0. That's the change in the momentum per unit time. We have this uh, factor here entering. And this will be equal to the net force on the system. So it is M, uh, this is the change in the uh, momentum. This is M1G, the force that pulls to the left, minus MTG. Okay. So uh, we simply write A from here. A is equal to M1G minus MTG plus lambda U0 divided by M1 plus MT. 
Now I can erase this part. A equals M1G minus MTG. I'm writing this again because we will play with this equation a little bit. Lambda U0 over M1 plus MT, where MT is M20 minus lambda T. That's the result. This is the acceleration of the uh, system. Uh, let's check the dimension. This is mass over mass, mass over mass, GG acceleration. Lambda is mass per unit time, per unit time. U0 is velocity, L over T. So this is uh, force, force divided by mass, acceleration. So dimension uh, check. If lambda is zero, then if lambda is zero, no ejection, then I have M20, that's the this is M20, M20, then that's the result of the classical output without any rocket mechanism. Uh, we can notice uh, something here. Few things. It is as if uh, here is a uh, force of thrust applied. So if you want to write uh, a quick way to solve this problem, you can say this is M1, this is MT, this is MTG, and this is M1G. And in addition, you have a, a thrust here, lambda U0. So it's the net force divided by the total mass that is moving. Of course, as time goes on, MT is changing. A few more remarks. As this is falling, it's uh, picking up uh, speed and also acceleration. Now, uh, since the rope, the string cannot push uh, this thing down. It, it is not a stick or rod. This is just a string. So it can be under tension, but it cannot carry compression. So the largest acceleration uh, of uh, M1 will be G. So let's see, when can it be G? When, under what uh, circumstance uh, can this be G? So let's write it like this, A equals M1 <coughs> minus M1G, then minus MTG, minus lambda u0 divided by m1 plus mt. Now the only way it can be uh, <coughs> g, namely this is going up so fast that uh, with such acceleration that the rope becomes uh, slack, is when this is minus uh, mtg. Then minus minus is plus, M, M1 plus M2 is cancel, it will be G. So let's write it, MTG minus lambda U0, that will be minus MTG, or 2 MTG, that's equal to lambda U0. So uh, <coughs> this is when A is equals to 0. So it should be uh, not equal, but uh, less than that. So with that condition, 2 m to 0 minus lambda uh, Tg lambda u0, <coughs> this picks up a time. So. When the time is such that this becomes uh, lower than that, then uh, 
this is flying and the uh, uh, string will go, uh, because it cannot carry compression, it will go slack. Another way of looking at it is this. First I do that, M1 tension. If I, if I look at the, uh, what is the tension in the rope? So M1G minus T is equal to M1A. Therefore T is equal to M1 G minus A M1 G M1 plus G M T minus M1 G minus plus M2 G minus lambda u0 over m1 plus mt. So m1g's cancel. So it is m1 to m2 to mtg minus lambda u0 divided by plus mt. So uh, for tension, to exist in the rope, this has to be positive. Namely, mt to uh, mt uh, g must be larger than lambda u zero. If that condition, you see, mt is uh, getting lower and lower. What happens here? No, it has to be larger. Let me correct this one. All right. So this is getting lower and lower, and there will come a time t zero, perhaps. Uh, this is no longer satisfied, and in that case, this is falling with uh, with g, and is this accelerating up by itself because there, there is no tension. Likewise, if you want to uh, solve for the second mass, uh, if you isolate, you have a tension, and then you have this thrust M2G. So you can show that uh, tension is the same, same thing here. Okay.